about myself. Um, I went to U of T and I graduated recently. So April, 2020, that's when I graduated and I'm currently doing my master's at the Harvard GSD. It's been online, not the most fun um, environment to be on Zoom, but hopefully we'll be back in person soon. So this is the portfolio that I used to apply to grad school with. It's definitely changed quite a bit since then, but this should give you a good understanding of what a grad school application portfolio should look like. Um, I know someone asked about cover page earlier in the session. So as you can see, mine is completely blank, nothing on there other than my name. Um, I would say personally, keep your cover page super simple. Don't overcrowd it. This is not really the place for you to show off your design skills. It's just a cover page. And same with the table of contents, which you will see here. So in terms of the type of projects that I included here, I included four academic and two professional projects. Um, one thing to keep in mind is try to include a variety of different scales in your project. So a smaller scale project, larger scale project, you really wanna be able to show off a lot of different types of projects. You don't wanna be repetitive. You wanna make sure you're showing off as many different aspects of your design skills as possible. Um, I think that's really important for a master's portfolio. So I started off with this um, more traditional building um, student housing project, which you will do at some point in Daniel's if you go into the design stream. Um, one thing to keep in mind, which is super important, is you want to make sure to keep a consistent format throughout your portfolio. So for me personally, what I had done was I, for every project, I introduced it with a full bleed drawing on the right hand side and then text on the left hand side. Um, just make sure you're consistent. That's the most important thing. You want to make sure all your projects are reading in the same format. Uh, so for this particular project, what I wanted to show was um, this ability to integrate outdoor and indoor, which you will see later down the line. But I started off with this party drawing and a precedent on the left. Make sure that the order of your drawings makes sense. Like chronologically, if you're looking at a project, you want to make sure that you're ordering your drawings in a way that makes sense for someone who's looking at it. So here I included some of my plans. Um, again, you can see on the ground floor plan on the left-hand side, the idea of integrating indoor and outdoor was really important for this project. Again, um, you wanna make sure all your line weights and drawings are super legible at a screen um, size. People aren't gonna be zooming into your work. So you wanna make sure everything's legible at the size that it's being shown. Um, yeah, so here I was just showing some more in intimate interior unit diagrams and a larger AXO. So showing the interior workings of the building. And then again, a more traditional section, just showing how the units are being um, integrated with this interior core that I had designed for the project. And then I ended off with a render and a model photo. Um, again, in the render, you see this idea of indoor outdoor that's coming into play. And then for the second project, it is a smaller scale project, so a small home. This is probably the smallest scale project in my portfolio. Um, and for this project, I wanted to focus on the model making aspect. So the casting was really important in the way that I came up with this particular design. Um, and then in terms of laying out my uh, drawings here, you can see that my plans are placed in relation to the AXO. So you can see where the plan is existing in AXO. So little details like that help your project read more clearly for someone who's looking at your project. So just keep those things in mind, make sure it's very legible for someone looking at it. And then here's some more traditional sections and perspectives that you see in this page. Um, so for, this, for the next two projects, you will see my professional projects that I did when I was working. The important thing to keep in mind with professional projects, only include drawings that you did yourself. No one cares about what the firm is doing <laughs> if it has nothing to do with your part in it. Only include drawings that you made. That's super important to keep in mind if you're including those. So for this project, what I wanted to include was a very different style of drawings. I didn't want to include traditional plans or sections because 
you see, you already saw those previously in my other projects. So I wanted to show a unique drawing style. So I included those more Ikea instruction drawing looking <laughs> style of drawings in this page. Um, and it was particularly because the specific project deals with these modular and scalable pieces. And I felt like this drawing style was the best way to show that. Um, and then again, I made some renderings for this particular project. Um, yeah, so the other thing with the renderings, for example, is these renderings weren't at all a part of what the firm was including for that project, but I had sort of made those myself because I felt like they would be a nice piece to add for this project. So stuff like that is always nice to do when you're looking at professional projects as well, is add your own touch to it. And then this project was a concert hall uh, competition in Lithuania that the firm was looking at. So my particular role for this project was I was in charge of renders. Um, so for this project in particular, I really wanted to show off my rendering skills. So that's basically the main thing that I included for this project. Um, again, it's very different than the style of some of the other things that I did in my portfolio, but I really wanted to show that I'm able to create a lot of different styles of drawings, a lot of different types of drawings, and that I have the ability to create, you know, diagrammy type drawings, more illustrative drawings, but then also more realistic drawings. So just showing kind of the multifaceted nature of the portfolio. Um, next, we have a design build. Um, I know you guys are at Daniel's. I would highly, highly, highly recommend doing a design build at some point in your undergrad or even afterwards. It's super fun, first of all, and you get to really experience what it's like to build something in real life, which we don't get to do much as architects. So super, super fun, would highly recommend. So for this project, really wanted to emphasize the building aspect of this, and then also including photos of the actual construction and you know being there on site and building these things. Um, that's something that you don't see in the other parts of my portfolio. So again, a more unique take on construction as an important part of this particular project. And then lastly, I end off with my um, thesis project. At this point, when I was applying, it was super underdeveloped and <laughs> it wasn't complete by any means, but it was sort of a nice way to end my portfolio with like more speculative drawings that were not necessarily like your traditional architecture drawings, but kind of more fun um, research-based drawings that helped inform my thesis at the end. So yeah, um, I ended off just with a more fun, lighthearted note for my portfolio. Um, yeah, and that was my thesis, whatever, <laughs> grad school portfolio. I'm happy to answer any questions that you have about the portfolio or just like grad school applications in general, or just any questions that you have for me, I'm happy to help. Um, I have a question. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, in the beginning of your portfolio, you seem like you have like a pretty consistent like color scheme. Mm -hmm. I was wondering if you went over like, your previous project and changed a little bit like of the, the colors. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I will say one thing, which people don't necessarily keep in mind when they're doing their portfolios. Every single drawing that I had done in school was redone for this portfolio. <laughs> It takes a lot of time, but when you're doing school, uh, you know, drawings for school, you're catering it for your professor. So you're not really catering it for your design sense. Like I know a lot of my professors love black and white line drawings. That's what they liked at Daniels, but that's, it wasn't my style. It wasn't what I was interested in particularly. So I ended up redoing all those drawings to make it fit my design narrative and my style. And I'm sure all of you guys have like very different styles and designs that you like to work within. So don't take your school projects as they are and just plop them in. Like really take the time to think about what is my style? What do I like? And how can I change these projects to fit my particular tendencies with design? Thank you. No worries. I think Mark has a question. Oh, my bad. Hi. Um, so I was just wondering if you have any um, advice for 
uh, applying to whichever stream, like you chose design stream specifically. So are there any key things to take away from it? And uh, what are the people looking for when they look at your portfolio? That's a good question. So stream portfolios are very different from um, grad school portfolios, of course, because at that point you don't have much to work with. Um, the one thing I will say to keep in mind for those is you're mainly looking at your academic work, but one thing that is super important for those portfolios is your layout and the way that you're showing those projects. Because a lot of you guys are gonna have the same projects that you're showing for that portfolio, you wanna make sure that the way that you're presenting it and the layout and the graphics of the portfolio is super clear and clean and that it looks visually appealing. Um, I think that's the main thing to be looking at for such a short portfolio, like the stream portfolio. Um, and then more realistically, they are also looking for your grades in studio to make sure that depending on the stream that you're going into, for example, if you're going into technology stream, your grades in the tech courses are more important versus the design stream, you're looking at more of your studio design grades. So it's a multi-layered thing for that, but for the application portfolio, definitely just keep it really clean and clear in the way that you're presenting it. Awesome, thanks. No worries, of course. Hi, um, one really quick question. Um, within your renderings, it was like, um, I don't know how to describe it, but it was more so like really soft and watercolor feel to it. How did you achieve it? It was like really, really intriguing and it didn't look like a collage render, but I'm not so sure you could, yeah. Yeah, thank you for the question. Um, yeah, I have a very particular style in the way that I like to convey my renders and drawings. And it's just something that I personally enjoy looking at. So that's sort of where I tend to put my drawings into. But I use a lot of Photoshop <laughs> in my, you know, design work generally, and a lot of Illustrator. So what I typically like to do is, this might be like super cheesy or whatever, but go into Pinterest, go into Pinterest and look up design schemes and look up different architecture drawings. It gives you a lot of inspiration for different styles of drawings that you can aim for. So I always start off by looking at like inspiration for color schemes and stuff that I'm interested in. And then I cater my drawings to fit those. Um, Photoshop is really helpful as well for adding like really soft textures into your drawings. Um, so that's something that I would look into. Um, yeah, I would say also like look, look at other people's portfolios and drawings and how they've done things and then pick out things that you like from different types of projects and think about how your design capabilities can kind of grab from all the different things you've seen and be able to make whatever work that you enjoy making. Um, I think it's uh, time that the breakout rooms will end in a bit. Um, I just wanted to say that uh, it was really inspiring to see here her portfolio, Juman. It was really, really great. And especially like the range of work you um, succeeded to show um, that you can achieve. Um, that really, that, that, is, that is like a major takeaway that I would be taking away from this one. Awesome, um, yeah. Um, more than, also guys, if you wanna reach out to me anywhere, I don't know, like Instagram, email or something, feel free to, I'm more than happy to, you know, answer questions more deeply if anyone has any, so. Yeah, don't be shy. Reach out for help. Uh, where could we get the email? Your email? Um, uh, we will probably email all uh, the people who are um, present today with uh, information where you can reach our speakers. Um, maybe their Instagram. We'll, we'll share that soon. All right. 